from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Ready to change the world? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. Thank you so much for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. And um, we're getting closer and closer to the end of the year. I... uh, I told you that um, I've been uh, cutting back in a variety of ways in my own life, believe it or not. You may think, uh, hey, you don't have to cut back. You've got cash. But I have been cutting back in a variety of ways. I have cut my bills at home, eliminated some unnecessary things I was uh, buying and paying for. Dean is right. I did some bargain hunting on hotel rooms. I found a hotel room in Vegas when I went to the De La Hoya fight for $104 a night. I didn't spend four or $500. I didn't stay at the Wynn. I didn't. I have delayed a vacation I was going to take. I've delayed it uh, for three months. I was going to go to Chile, and I'm going to go, but I'm going to go a little later. And I'm going to save, uh, you know, probably 25 grand on a trip I would have taken. I'll take it at some point, but I'm going to delay it for now. And uh, this time I'm not going to take any vacation at all. I'm going to stay uh, right here in Southern California for the holidays. Haven't done that in years. In fact, this will be the second vacation in a row I have taken in Southern California. I, I took my last vacation... Uh, at my ranch up in Santa Barbara back in uh, the end of August, beginning of September. And um, I'm just going to uh, cut back. You know, what's interesting is that uh, I know other people who make a good living. There's less and less of us around. And thank goodness I'm still here uh, making good living. And we'll just see how that goes. But uh, all I want to say is this, that um, I know other people who make a good living, and I find that many of them are cutting back, too. And you may be surprised to know that people who uh, who have money are cutting back also. Now, you'd probably laugh because I'll bet some people are saying they're not taking limos as often. <laughs> I bet some people have gotten rid of the private plane. Some people like to use a private jet or they own a fractional ownership of a private jet. Uh, some people have cut back. Uh, I, I know one person who used to go to Italy eight times a year <laughs> to go shopping. I know that's been cut back. But um, I also know that, um, well, because I've read the book The Billionaire Next Door, because I know myself, I know that even people with money are cutting. They are cutting. And in fact, uh, they are not only cutting now, but uh, many people who have money um, live very frugal lives. That's how they became millionaires. Do you know that? Many people just simply... uh, do not live at the level that you would expect them to, and therefore, in some cases, you don't even know they're millionaires. It's absolutely true. There are people who drink cheap beer, people who uh, who fly southwest. By the way, when I went to Vegas, I flew southwest. You know who I met when I was in the when I was in the line to get to the plane? Pialin. He was also taking southwest. That's right. We both were. Seriously speaking, I do believe that uh, you would be surprised how frugal people with money tend to be. (laughs) And so what I thought I would do in this hour of the program, since we've been talking about the economy, is to talk to people with money. Now, I know we've got a lot of listeners who have money. Because I've seen the ratings and I've seen the psychographic studies. And I know that uh, we rank among the highest of all radio programs in Southern California 
of people with high incomes, high education, and uh, people with assets. And uh, so I'd like to talk to people who are up there, okay? I'm talking millionaires or above. Millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires. We know you're out there. People with good money. People who have a good income. You know, maybe people who make more than $500,000 a year. Uh, because um, I think it would be very instructive for people who aspire to be millionaires <laughs> to find out how millionaires are cutting the budget. I, I but By the way, I see people at Costco who I know are millionaires. Pushing around, getting jostled around the chimichanga samples, I see them. I absolutely do. I see people taking less vacations, shorter vacations. I see people uh, saving more money. I see people putting lower wattage light bulbs in their 5,000 square foot homes. I know people who have sold large homes and moved into condominiums or what have you. These are people with money. People are battening down the hatches. So we've talked to people on this program about how you have cut back, but I'm wondering if you are educated and you make good money, if you have been making cuts in your lifestyle, if you've stopped spending money, if you have done, here's one thing I've done, I have gone through every bill I get with a fine-tooth comb. One of the many ways we waste money, phone bills, whether it's your landline or your cell phone bill, do you know how many features you're paying for? that you stopped using years ago, or maybe they're features you never knew you had. I mean, you don't have to be rich to do this, folks. Call the phone company. Call your cell phone company and see if you're getting the best deal. Cell phone companies frequently cut their prices, but they never tell you they're doing it. You have to call them, and you have to ask for the best deal. My uh, cell phone bill went down $30 a month. I didn't change a thing. All I did was call up and say, I want the lowest price you have, and I got it, which was pretty cool. Some people are getting lower interest rate credit cards or getting rid of credit cards altogether. Some people have cut back uh, on their uh, banking services. You know, how many of you are paying fees for various uh, bank accounts or uh, low balance fees or IRA fees, and you've uh, eliminated those fees? I mean, there's a million ways you can cut back. And I figured that people with money are the best people to tell us how to cut, what to cut, how much is out there. Because I happen to know people with money are the most frugal people I know. I know it goes against the stereotype, and it goes against what you believe, that rich people engage in conspicuous consumption. But for every rap artist who's out there driving with a gold tooth and uh, the, you know an SUV with blacked-out windows... There's 99 of the millionaires that you don't even know are millionaires. No doubt in my mind. So if you've got money, I mean money, and you've been cutting back, I want to know what you've been cutting and why. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Tom Micah's show with shorter commercial breaks than ever before. Now heard six days a week. Here is in Los Angeles. Saturdays from 2 until 6 on 97.1 FM Talk. And if you're not in Los Angeles and you can't hear the show on the radio, go to blowmeuptom.com, click on the Listen Live button anytime or on live, and bam, there you go. Okay. 1-800-5800-TOM. I want to talk to people of means, people with money, lots of money, and find out how they are cutting back. And we'll see if you think this is funny or helpful, and it might be a little bit of both. Lisa on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how are you? I'm okay, Lisa. Good. Now, before we get started here, you've got money. Yes. Right. Uh, how did you get money? Uh, what do you do? What does your husband do? 
Well, my husband is the CEO of a technology company, and, uh, you know, we, we're both educated. I'm not working right now. Um, because you don't have to. Right. Not because you lost your job or you were worried about the future or whatever. Uh, you don't have to work. No, I don't have to. And, and also because we're conservative. I don't spend my days spending money. I spend my days working on my house and, you know, trying to save money. And, uh, you know, I think the, the point of all of this is that for successful people, I mean, we spend the same as we did when, time, when you know, times were good. I mean, we're very consistent about our spending. We don't spend as extravagantly. I mean, I would say right now the only change we've made is we cut out HBO. But other than that, you know, we, we don't own expensive, you know, large screen TVs, flat screen TVs, and I drive a 1994 Volvo, and we're just, we're very conservative. My husband drives a 2001, um, a nicer car, but, but we own them. We paid cash for them, and, you know, we don't have debt. We don't have credit card debt. We don't lease cars. And, you know, it just, it takes a big stress off of, off of everything when you're just not in the hole for a lot of things. Right. Now, uh, are people surprised if they hear this about you? Yeah, I think they are. I think they're a little, they, they're a little curious as to why I drive the car I do, especially considering the neighborhood we live in. I mean, it's, it's unusual, but, you know, I don't feel, I mean, trust me, when I'm at, in the parking lot at Costco, no one would know I live where I do. I mean, it's it's pretty funny. I probably <laughs> I've probably run into you at Costco. Probably, probably. <laughs> so uh, this is what I've been trying to explain to people. Uh, did you read that book, The Millionaire Next Door? Are you aware of it? You know, I do have the book, and I think I've I've kind of skimmed through it. But it's it's like everything I know already, so it's kind of redundant for me. Um, it's just everything that I kind of intuitively already know. Now, when you married your husband, did he uh, have a good job like he has now? Did you guys have money like you do now? No. I mean, we definitely, you know, it's taken some time to, to you know, to build up. But, um, you know, obviously we both, we both went to the same university, a good university. And, you know, I knew that. He's a very smart guy, and I knew what his potential was. It wasn't hard to see that he was going to be successful. On, uh, you know, again, I, I think this is important for people to understand that uh, uh, the many times when people make their way to the top, or at least the top of uh, whatever it is they were planning on doing, uh, they don't spend any more. They don't live a more lavish lifestyle, uh, and in many cases, they don't. Um, they, they don't engage in conspicuous consumption. And you certainly sound like you're in that category. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And when I, you know, when times are good, that's when we're really saving. It's it's because we know times are going to be bad, and so you know, it kind of evens things out. Right. Sounds good to me, Lisa. Thank you for the call. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here's Paul on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Paul. It's uh, Paul from North Hollywood. No, you're Tom. I'm Paul. <laughs> I got it the other way around. No, okay, everything. there you go. Uh, Tom, I wanna I wanna thank you, man. You've been like the greatest inspiration in the world for me. Uh, that millionaire next door book. But am I Tom or anymore. Paul? You're Tom. Okay. I'm Paul. I want to make sure you have that straight. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, that book uh, couldn't couldn't have helped me anymore, man. I mean, you uh, you personally have inspired me to go back to school. I'm actually like two years away from going into law school now, and uh, this is just the most beautiful thing in the world. The way that book has been helping me, been cutting back on costs. Can't tell you how uh, frugal technically is, which what it's called is how I'm living. It's just beautiful, man. I just want to thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm glad to hear that's working out so well for you. That's fantastic. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. So nice to talk to you. Sure it is. Thank you so much for also for being on on Saturday. It's a public service, as you know. I, I, I try to tell all my girlfriends they don't always agree, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not there rooting for you. Um... Regarding this subject, I, I sort of knew this was coming, 
So I sort of in, got out of things that might be more volatile in the market. So, so wait, I, tell me where you got your money from before we get to how you're cutting back. The entertainment industry. All right, so you are a singer, actor, what? Well, um, do I need to say that? <laughs> well, we don't need. We don't know who you are, and we don't want to know who you are. Just, just trying to get a general idea. Uh, okay, in front of the camera. All right, very good. So yeah. you've been making a lot of money for a long time. Uh, well, yes, yep. Like, like maybe before you were eighteen. No, 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 no. All right, as no. an adult, you made a lot of money. In front of the camera. Yeah, and, I do. And what have you done? And you're still making a lot of money in front of the camera. And, and what do you do with it? Well, I, I make sure that I probably, let's say, I probably save uh, probably almost 50% of my income. That, of, that, my, of my net income. That is substantial. Well, but, you know, I have girlfriends making $75,000, maybe $100,000, and they're spending every penny of it. Yes. They have been nice. Oh, you know, and I, you know, listen, I, I don't, I think I live within my means. I, I think I do since I'm saving 50% of my income. But do I have, like, the big house on the hill with the, you know, no, I don't. I have a very nice house with a very nice pool. I have a housekeeper. I have gardeners. I have pool people. Um, but I, I just always... I guess because my uh, grandfather went through the Depression, he was very influential in that, you know, people just spend too much. And so I always feel guilty spending half of what I make. I understand that. And uh, I'm sure you know, and you don't need me to tell you, that in your position of being a female in the entertainment industry, that you have a window of opportunity to sock it away, and there will come a time whether it's nice or not or fair or not, whether you like it or not, uh, there will come a time when your expiration date will uh, will will come and then uh, you won't be able to make the money like you do now. Right. Uh, you know, fortunately for me, I'm my age and I look 10 years. I mean, according to the people, that I, I think I look my age, but people who I go in front of say I look 10 years younger. So that helps me a lot. And honestly, probably in another year or two, I, I could stop working and, and live on my investments. Again, I put out of the stock market and um, I put a lot in tax-free bonds, so I'm very conservative for my age, but, yeah. Good for you. So, you know, well, but I, I'd like to keep working because I'd like to have children. I have a couple of kids, so I'd like to, again, not... You know, have it there just in case they, they need it also. Right. So we'll, we'll see. But, again, I think... The problem is, is that people see people like me or people like you and go, well, I want a Lexus and I want a this and I want that. And it's like, but you don't make that kind of money. Why are my girlfriends going to make $100,000 a year driving the same car that I drive? It, it makes makes no sense. No. At $100,000 a year in Southern California is chump change at this, at this point for a lot of people. Well, I wish they would see that. And you know, I, I mean, it's one thing if you live alone, but if you've got kids, if you've got a family, a hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, that puts you. Listen, Tom, sometimes I think a million dollars. I mean, I, I I hate to say this because people think, well, you're out of your mind, but sometimes I think a million dollars a year is not that much money. Well, after taxes and after you pay, you know, I don't live extravagantly, but you've got. I have somebody taking care of my house. So I have to have somebody taking care of my children. If I'm not, if I have to work, um, you know, I, I shop at Target just like the next person. But after everything, it's like, uh, you know, if I'm not putting away that, that money, you know, I, I really start sweating. <laughs> I understand. Lisa, thank you so much for the call. I appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. I'm talking to people with money to find out how they're cutting back. Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Richard. How are you? Good buddy. Doing great. Oh, excellent. Anyways, I uh, love the topic. I thought I'd give you a call. First time caller. Uh, what I did, I've got, uh, let me give you a little background. I've got uh, about eight, well, started off the year at about 18 million in a trust. It's down to about 13 million. I made most of my money in real estate, um, and saw this, uh, kind of coming up and, uh, sold a bunch of stuff back in 05, 06, been sitting on the sideline. So, 
Well, the biggest thing that I've cut, Tom, is I dumped my wife. It was fantastic. <laughs> uh, my, <laughs> my portfolio got a little bit low. I did have a pre-dump, but, you know, those things are, uh, you know, breaking these days. And, uh, yeah, I, I just I dumped her. I'm the happiest guy in the world right now. Wow. Look at that. What a way to cut back. Absolutely. I highly recommend it. All you guys out there where your house values are low and your 401s are down there, Right now is the time to dump those bitches, I'm telling you. Cut them loose, baby. Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likes Show. Tom Like is show at one 800 800 tom Shorter commercial breaks. Mean we get back to your moronic comments faster. That's the bottom line. The Tom Like is show now. Six days a week. <laughs> it's one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. All right. I'm talking to people with money. I mean real money. Millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires, people with real cash. I want to find out how you're cutting back. And uh, no matter whether it seems funny to people or not, I'd like to know how you're cutting back uh, during this recession. Kevin in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Good to talk to you. Sure it is. <laughs> great topic. Great subject. Awesome. I love it. Thank you. Um, well, my wife and I, yes, I'm married, married for 20 years. Uh, we were married at 25 just as we both graduated uh, with our master's in business. Um, my wife went on to get a degree in textiles. She now works for a large sporting company that you might know of as Nike. Uh-huh. Um, she's a department head. Um, I am a stay-at-home hedge funds manager, and I also work for a microtechnologies company, a very large one here in Portland that you might also know as Intel. That's like two um, and a half full-time jobs. <laughs> It is, but you know what? Uh, you, you you work hard, and you reap the benefits later in life, and that's what we've done. And the problem with today's society is nobody is setting themselves up for the future, and, and, and here we have a recession, and you have all these people who haven't, have not, you know, done what they needed to do to set themselves up for the future so they can withstand a recession like this. I'm doing fine. We're both doing okay. Yes, we're cutting back. Um, we're cutting back on our vehicles. Um, we had two very expensive, big gas guzzling vehicles. We both now do not drive. What do you drive uh, now? Um, I actually bought myself a Prius to get to work and back. And my wife drives a Beamer. She drives the three series Beamer, which, you know, they're both new vehicles. We paid cash for them. Um, but you know, we're, we're doing our part to, uh, you know, save on the gas and just expenses, food. We don't eat out as much. I mean, literally, Tom. You know, we just didn't pay attention to what we were spending. You know, we didn't really need to. And we were eating out every night or bringing home expensive meals every night. And, you know, we're both busy. We don't like to cook. We don't have time to cook. And, and you know, we're cutting back on the trips we take, although uh, taking a vacation now is unbel It is a buyer's market no matter what it is you're buying, whether it's a vacation or a Learjet. I mean, um it, so being set up in life, having the money that we have, being comfortable, we're set We're set for life. I mean, but, you know, a lot of our investments, we've lost money in a lot of our investments. We own a lot of property. We're having a hard time finding renters. Um, it's just, you know, it's tough for everybody all around. We're going to be okay. Like I said, we're, we're going to be fine. But we are cutting back. We're finding ourselves cutting back just – because we don't want to, you know, we don't know how long this recession is going to last. How much more are we going to lose in our investments? Um, and, and so we're, it, it, you know, it, it's it's scary for everybody. But, uh, you know, I know you're cutting back too, Tom. It sounds weird to hear, you know, our friends. We have, you know, we hang out. We have friends that are millionaires as well, um, you know, that we've met through business. And, and, you know, they're cutting back. And the ones that aren't cutting back, you know, they're just spending frivolously, buying new cars every year. You know, my buddy just bought a brand new uh, Ferrari Spider, uh, paid cash for it. He can't even get insurance on the thing. They won't insure him. 
Um, so, you know. <laughs> why, wait, why won't they insure him? Um, they won't insure, they'll insure him for, you know, like liability or if he were to hit somebody else, but they won't insure his vehicle because they, it would cost the company, the insurance company, too much to, to replace that vehicle or, or do repairs if they had to. So, um, you know, that to me is a, is frivolous. I mean, to, to buy something that, you know, you could take down the street and some idiot hits you. His insurance company does, he doesn't have enough. His insurance company has probably got the minimums. So he's not going to have enough to, to pay for this car if somebody hits you, even if it's not your fault. Um, and I just don't live that way. I just, uh, you know, we got to where we are in life because we saved and we scrimped and, and, um, you know, we're finding ourselves resorting back to that way of living now. Wow. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, that, that's what I try to tell people. They find it hard to believe that people who have money or have good jobs are cutting back. But uh, we didn't get where we are by assuming that we were immune to this stuff. Uh, and um, I do believe and I see it around me that uh, people of means are cutting back. You know, uh, you, you brought up a good point, Tom. You know, a lot of the millionaires today were scrimpers and savers and and penny pinchers and i was like that i didn't always have money you know i put myself through school um and my wife put herself through school she is uh you know she's very diligent she's a hard nose you know just just puts her nose down to the grindstone when it's necessary um she's a great awesome fun woman lover to death and i think that's what attracted me to her was just her dedication and she was looking for the same things in life i was and now that we're there um and we're in this time this time of recession and i think everybody needs to cut back no matter how much money you have because you know like i said i don't know when intel is going to lay off yeah i ha you know i have a, a an executive position but those are the positions that are going first um and, and yeah, i am fearful of that Thank you so much, Kevin, for the call. I appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. All right, you feel like you're cutting back. Uh, but uh, how are people with money cutting back? How are they cutting back on uh, uh, their expenses? They are cutting back. Let's say hello here to Rick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Doing okay. Well, hey, just uh, calling up and kind of getting that kick out of this subject. I've uh, been a long-time listener you know, people talking about, uh, you asked, uh, you know, for people to call that are making over 500000 I kind of start chuckling. I pay over 600000 in taxes to the federal government uh, just this last year. And uh, people talking about, oh, I make $75,000 uh, a year. Well, I pay $75,000 a year or more than that in property taxes. Just sent um, <laughs> my first installment uh, of... Uh, about forty grand uh, to uh, different uh, assessors' office uh, throughout the uh, the state. So I kind of get a chuckle uh, about uh, about the, uh, the topic. But I will say there has been cutting back. Uh, I used to drive around in a suburban uh, with a big uh, engine, and you know what? I'm driving around in a Toyota Sequoia right now. Uh, got my nice cars, but. Uh, Wife uh, drives around the Lexic, Lexic uh, H400H, which we paid cash for. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything is uh, either cash or uh, pay by credit card uh, just to collect the points, uh, but it's all paid off at the end of the month. This is all, uh, I think, important for people to know about. Uh, I pretty much do the same thing. I don't drive a hybrid vehicle like you do, but uh, other than that, uh, yes, I agree with you. Uh, I use the credit cards to get the points. I pay my credit cards off in full at the end of the month. I don't pay to rent money. I don't take out car loans. If I can't afford to buy a car with cash in a given year or a given month, uh, I wait until I can. And uh, every car I've ever owned, I've bought with cash. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, even the vacation homes, uh, we have vacation homes up in Mammoth and uh, Lake Nascimento. Uh, you know, we've done our fair share of uh, vacationing, uh, but you know, in the last uh, couple of years, the trips to uh, to Aspen, we're now staying uh, in uh, using our our homes locally in uh, Mammoth and uh, Nascimento Lakes uh, a lot more often. So yeah, we have cut back as well. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, people don't think it's a cutback, but um, I own my ranch up in Santa Barbara County, and that's where I'm going to be spending the holidays this year rather than going uh, to South America. Yeah, we're doing the same thing. Uh, hey, great topic, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Uh, by the way, if any of you think this is bizarre or strange, I'll, I'll take your calls at 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm talking to people with money, millionaires, multimillionaires, even billionaires. I'm talking to people with money and finding out how they're cutting back during uh, the rough times that America's going through. And uh, let's say hello to Arthur on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing today? Okay. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah, I'm cutting back too. I have to cut the salaries of my of my office staff by ten percent. Ten percent. I had to. I had no choice because our because this the economy. Uh, my caseload is down. Okay, thirty percent from this time last year. So it really it, it really stuck it to me. You know, I drive around in a Honda now. I used to drive around in a Mercedes. You know, I can't afford it. Okay, or actually, not that I can't afford it. I don't want to afford it. You know what I mean? Right. Now, if you make if you make that much money and you have that much money, the question that people would ask is, why are you cutting back? I mean, you don't have to cut back, so why are you doing it? No, I don't have to, but I want to save my money. Okay, right now we we got the rainy days. Okay, if I sit down and lose my office, or if I lose my caseload by seventy five percent, I can still sit down and live my normal, comfortable life with what I've got saved up. I mean, I put myself through law school, and it was no joke. You know, now, no what, joke one could argue. And I'm just playing devil's advocate here. One could argue that right now in a recession. You can get great deals on just about everything. I just read in the newspaper today that right after Christmas will be the best time to buy a car in years. True, you can buy your car uh, right now. You'll get the best deal. But here's the question for you. Can you afford it afterwards? You know, about 75% to 80% of the population buy, buys cars on credit. So you're going to sit down and tell me that the average Joe Blow is going to buy himself a new car because the the rates are great, the prices are great. Oh no, I'm talking. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. Oh, I could buy my. I can buy another car easy, easy. I'll I, I, I'm using cars as an example. I mean, everything's on sale now. Anything you might want to buy, whether it's real estate, cars, whatever, it's all on sale. Right, but you know, you know what? I grew up like you. I was poor. I was like dirt poor, and I learned the value of my money. You know, when you've got like two dollars to to your name at one point, okay, you learn to enjoy top ramen. You learn to enjoy a lot of that stuff. But now that I've got the money, you know, I want to keep it. I don't want to sit down and just blow it on frivolous things. Good for you. Good for you. I thought it'd be interesting to find out. Uh, what rich people are doing during the recession. Are you surprised? Tom like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. The Tom Like It Show. Tom Likas show coming to you from the belly of the beast, Hollywood, California. Thank you for tuning again. Thank you for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are, 1 800 5 800 Tom. We're talking to people with money, millionaires, multi millionaires, billionaires, finding out how they're cutting back during the recession. Let's say hello here to Alexa on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. I'm a first-time caller. Very excited. Yes. And uh, I just wanted to tell you that my husband and I, he's actually right next to me. We're driving to get a little sushi in Malibu right now. And uh, we are actually spending while everyone else is saving. And I know that sounds kind of crazy, but the reason that we're doing that is because we were super conservative uh, for the past few years while everybody else was spending like crazy. And we were super, super conservative. And now 
we, I don't know, there's something about all of this that is kind of making us say, you know what, we did the right thing, and now we want to reap the benefits. So we're going to reap the benefits, and we're going to go get cars at great deals. We just bought two cars, I swear to God, on my niece's life. We bought two cars in the past, what, 48 hours? And, uh, and what kind of, wait, let's, let's find out what kind of cars have you bought? We bought a Porsche 911 and a uh, Range Rover. I know the Range Rover isn't the most eco-friendly car in the world, but, uh, yeah, so we bought those two. But Now, wait, wait, let me ask you a couple yeah. of questions here, okay? Uh, did you get a great deal, or did, did, yeah. how, in what way? How, how much did you see? We got a great deal. The Range Rover is usually about, I don't know, I guess what, how much, 82000 82000 bucks, and we stole it at 55000 What?! Thank you very much. That's Where a brand. Wait, that's a brand new Range Rover. A 2008 Range Rover. Wow, maybe it's time for me to trade up. What am I doing? Exactly. And then the 911 we got, and uh, we got that at a great deal. We paid cash for that, and we stole the 911 because they can't they can't get these cars off their lot. What did you pay for a 911? Honey, what did we pay for the 911? No comment, he says. Oh, no, come seriously. on, come on. Tell me how much. Oh, we're with Tom. Come on, otherwise he won't take you out with a bong hit. Tell me. Um, it was probably, we got a great sale. We got about 20000 off sticker. And I don't know what sticker is because I haven't shopped for a 911 recently. What, what's the price range we're talking here? The sticker's about, uh, what was it, about 100 Yeah, so we got it for about, actually we got it for, yeah, we got about 22000 off sticker. So we got it in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> You got a Porsche 911 in the 70s? Are you kidding me? I swear to God, one year old, one year old. Okay, it's one year old. Yeah, but that's still, come on, it had, uh, you know, nothing, like 5,000 miles on it. Wow, nothing. you have been cutting back. Yeah, so, I mean, but you know what, Tom, we, we really, we saved so much, and now, you know, and we were so, so conservative, and we felt like, you know, let's go out there, and, and, and now is the time to spend because we're getting great deals. And inadvertently, though it wasn't your intention, you are helping the economy by doing that. We are helping the economy by doing that. Well, it was exactly. not your intention. You couldn't care less, and neither could most people. No, I, I do care. And we're not, we're, you know what, it was really only with the cars. But even with eating out, I mean, we, you know, we're, we're not hurting as bad as everyone else because we were... We really did watch our money, and we were very, very safe with it. And so we're not, trust me, by no means are we going overboard right now, but it is a good time to, if you have the money stashed up, to get some pretty good deals out there. And you're not hurting anybody by doing it. You're actually helping. No doubt about it, Alexa. Thank you so much. And sure, I'll take you out with a bong hit. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Siobhan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi. Um, I'm not a millionaire, but I do have a question. I'm a 25 year old single woman, no children, never been married, and I just want to know if it's a good idea since the economy and the um, housing prices are so low right now to buy for someone my age. I do have a stable job. I'm in nursing. And pretty much the economy hasn't affected my salary at all. Well, first of so, all, do you have any idea the price of the place you would want to buy approximately? Um, probably 250 to 350 And have you checked to see that there are, you're looking for a condo, I take it. Have you checked to see if there are condos in the area where you want to live for that price? Right. We'll never know. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Brad on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey Tom, um, I am I'm comfortable, make a comfortable living, have my own business involved in production, manufacturing, business is down. Uh, so I'm cutting back. As what you can appreciate, I am on a lot of the cult wines, most of the cult wines. Uh, I'm cutting back on my wine. I'm cutting back on going out fine dining. Uh, By the way, I'm doing the exact same thing. I mean, uh, uh, we are drinking right now. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, we are drinking a bottle of Schramsberg uh, sparkling wine from Napa Valley that I bought at Trader Joe's. Well, I, I got an example for you. I have a lot of friends in Napa, as I know you do. When we go to the wineries, I get interwinery discounts. And it's hard to pass up when you're getting 33% off of some big name wineries, you know, like Camus, 
you know, Silver Oak, well, Silver Oak limits it how much you can get even on inner winery. But the bottom line is, when I go up there, I'm not spending as much wine, money on wine. I'm still buying my Screaming Eagle. Uh, maybe I'll cut back on Colgin. You know, uh, maybe I'll cut back on Strader, something like that. Now, you know? now tell me, how much are you getting Screaming Eagle for? Are you on the list? Oh, at Benefits is inaugural it, it vintage. So you, get, you pay, you pay what, about, you pay about eight fifty a bottle? Uh, well, no, I don't think it's that much, Bill. Um, the last time, the last vintage was, I believe it was 500 or 750 one of the two. But yeah. anyway, it's kind of ridiculous that we'd be, that I wouldn't know the exact price, but the bottom line is that... <laughs> The bottom line is that, uh, you know, I am cutting back. Um, I'm, I'm not cutting back. I wouldn't stop getting Screaming Eagle. I only get three bottles anyway. But, you know, on some of the other wineries that are really good wine, good juice, I'm cutting back. I'm not getting a case. I'm, I'm getting six bottles, maybe four, something like that. I've been getting some three-packs and some six-packs myself. And you know what, Tom? Just one last thing. Uh, I really appreciate your, sto- uh, your, your, your program, but... You can get on a lot of lists now that you couldn't just because of other people like me that are falling off and they're just not going to spend, you know, three hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars for a bottle of wine. Well, I'll tell you what, if you can get me on that Screaming Eagle list, uh, let me know. <laughs> okay, Tom. Good night. <laughs> Brad, thank you. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to James on the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I was uh, listening to you, you know, listening to people talk about cutbacks and stuff, and I made quite a bit of money, and I've got oh, approximately $17 million sitting in the bank in cash. I make about 12000 to 13000 a month on rental properties. Um, I'm living the same way that I lived when I started. Um, nothing's changed. Uh, credit cards, I use my credit card once every six months to keep it active, and I pay it off, but I've never used them. It's, it's a... Cash is king right now, and if you are frugal to save your money, you can live any way you want if you have the cash in the bank. I think you're right about that. Okay, our email address, it's my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Don't forget, we're on six days a week. If you would like to hear our show live on Saturdays, if you can't get it on the radio, go to BlowMeUpTom.com. Click on the Listen Live button between 2 and 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Every Saturday, the Tom Likas Show.